Hello from ITU headquarters in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined by Piotr domachowski lipski uh, the Executive Secretary at Utelsat IGO. Uh, we're at the Future of TV for Europe workshop, and we're here to talk about uh, Utelsat's view on the future of TV. Uh, thanks for joining us, Piotr. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Could you explain the meaning of uh, Utelsat IGO yeah. in relation to Utelsat? Actually, the best way of explaining this is to go a little bit back in history, and I promise I, I'll be very brief. Uh, UTELSAT, European Telecommunication Satellite Organization, was formed in 1977 by uh, several countries, what would used to be Western Europe, before all the political changes and uh, demolition of the Berlin Wall and so on, for the purpose of creating a pan-European system of satellite telecommunications, as the name implies. And, uh, you know, at the time, the, the whole uh, SATCOM industry was very young, it's nascent stage. And uh, since then, it has developed in a big business, um, uh, more and more services being offered. And it basically became, in addition of being an international intergovernmental organization, in addition of being an intergovernmental organization, uh, it has become a big business. Additionally, the political changes in Europe in 89, 1990, dissolution of the Soviet Union, expanded the membership of the organization uh, to 49 member states. So it was impossible to keep it as a business and an international organization. And in 2001, Utelsat was restructured. Basically, all the business side, all the employees, assets, uh, clients, were transferred into what is today known as Utelsat SA, one of the major satellite, uh, satellite operators in the world. And the uh, Utelsat IGO, as intergovernmental organization, stayed because the parties, the member states, decided that the organization should retain legal rights to orbital positions and associated frequencies. And that organization would let the company use uh, uh, those intangible assets, those uh, rights, in exchange, not so much for money, not for money at all, but for um, the company fulfilling or ensuring the fulfillment of certain um, basic principles of public service. And our role today is to make sure that the company does that. And the principal mechanism is for the executive secretary, who is an elected uh, official. That's my role now. I was elected two years ago for a four-year mandate, for a four-year term. Uh, the principal mechanism is uh, that the executive secretary sits on the board of directors as a non-voting member of Utelsat SA. So there is a, uh, a relationship which is a little bit indirect, but uh, very close. You mentioned on the way to the studio that uh, you've been in broadcasting for many years. And so how, how has it changed wha wha how over these years you've been in it, and what, what do you think the future looks like? Oh, yes. I, I actually uh, started out as, uh, as a radio journalist uh, back in the 80s. Uh, as a very young person and then uh, spent in years in cable TV, was one of the founders of what is now the largest, uh, now it's not only cable TV, but it's a quadru quadruple play player in Poland, now owned by UPC, and also a CFO of uh, Polish National Television. And, uh, you know, it's a cliche that it has changed a lot. <laughs> I mean, uh, we could probably go for hours talking about all those uh, uh, changes. I remember when I was a young journalist when I was doing editing, I was actually uh, sitting mm, at the editing table with a razor and actually cutting the tape. No, but today, uh, uh, today it's a, it's a completely n different business than it used to be. However, certain fundamentals uh, are still there. You know, you need to provide content that people like, that people can relate to. Uh, and uh, run your business in such a way that is profitable and uh, uh, and uh, not only good for your audiences but also for the culture as a whole, for the society as a whole, and for the investors if you're in commercial b uh, broadcasting business as opposed to public mm -hmm. uh, service. Uh, but uh, for the past several years, uh, starting with the advent of the digital uh, era and uh, the expansion of uh, all the technologies and techniques and business models uh, associated with uh, with data transmission, with the internet and so on. The industry itself is undergoing uh, uh, unbelievable uh, changes uh, uh, that actually this seminar uh, here in Geneva on the future of broadcasting is centered on and that uh, many changes. Um, 
primarily, primarily uh, uh, there's more um, universal and broader access uh, not controlled by uh, the broadcasters, but controlled uh, by viewers. If, if I were forced to, to give you one sentence explanation of those changes, this is it, that the uh, control patterns uh, change. And the viewer, the consumer, uh, the user, the interactive user of media has more and more uh, power. And, there, and the whole new set of business uh, paradigm has uh, uh, emerged and grown based on that. You, you speak of the consumer driving uh, for the business. There are, we have access to so many different forms of media. How are you seeing viewing habits change or media consumption habits change? And how is industry serving that? What are the new relationships and business uh, uh, changes that have to happen to enable that? Yeah, there are a couple of things. Uh, from the supply side, from the industry side, uh, the key word is convergence. Uh, convergence. Uh, the key word is that the, the key factor is that the lines between traditional in industries are blurred. Uh, telecommunications and, uh, and media, um, social media and traditional media, all of this uh, um, is in the process of, uh, the process is not finished yet, but is creating the whole new paradigm. Uh, from the demand side, from the customer side, is the advent of new generations. It's very much centered on generational change, uh, with young people, uh, what's called, you know, being digital natives and so on. Th that's actually their word, and they uh, insist of having the content on their terms at that time, or on, on their time, um, not only personalized. Uh, with personalization understood as done by somebody else, but them themselves uh, being in the driver's seat. And uh, convergence between social media and, tradi uh, and traditional uh, media is very important. Having said that, the uh, I will go back to what I said before. The fundamentals are still there. In, in, in order to, to make money, you need to have uh, interesting content. And the change is that sometimes this, this content nowadays is generated or aggregated by the users, and you have to do in a way that it's economically viable. That that probably will uh, will stay unchanged. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. Pleasure.